Hello everyone! My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today I am so excited because we are finally doing another BDSM 101 subject and I hope it was worth the wait because today we're going to be talking about mummification play. And as someone that is very much into this area of BDSM, I do feel like it gets overlooked, it's very much underrated, and a lot of people like just assume it's too extreme, it takes too much work, it just is not going to be their thing. And so I'm hoping that with this video, if you are someone that is maybe on the fence about it, you're kind of like cautiously curious, you don't know anything about it at all, or maybe you're someone that is very much into it but doesn't really know where to start, I'm going to be able to answer all of your different questions because we're going to be going over everything in this. What is mummification play? Why people are into it? How you can try it for yourself? As well as how you can use this to enhance the other scenes you might already be doing. And of course the usual basic stuff like safety information, medical things you might want to know about, and all of that too. So if that sounds good, you're in the right place and let's go ahead and get into talking about what is mummification play? So simply put, this is a form of bondage that involves totally restraining a person from head to toe using some kind of material, typically by wrapping them up in something. Some of the favorites for this include things like duct tape, bondage tape, or vet wrap, bandage wrap, saran wrap, cling film, latex sheets, there are tons of options out there. Now if you do want more of a simple DIY option, a lot of people will use things like bed sheets for this, especially when they are first starting out. You know the whole blanket burrito meme? Yeah, it's basically like you're, you're going to be doing that essentially. Now on the more extreme end, especially in pornography, you do see examples where people will use medical plaster to encase some someone and that is very much outside of the scope of this conversation but it is worth pointing out because a lot of people do enjoy that because it heightens the intensity of the lack of control of that feeling of being totally covered by something and it also gives it a little bit more of a medical play edge but no matter what form of this you're doing no matter what material you're using a lot of people have variations in the way they do this now in the classic example of this. The point is to fully wrap someone up from head to toe, literally from the tips of your toes to the tops of your heads. The only thing that might possibly be open are some nose holes depending on the breathability of the material, but that is what it's all about. You know, hands to the side, arms to the side, just completely, completely wrapped up. Now, depending on what your goals for the scene are, there are some variations on this. A lot of people will leave the feet free or the chest area or the genitals or the mouth or the eyes or the nose or even the whole head will be completely open depending on what you want to do with this. Now, I will get into how those things can be used in a scene a little bit later on, but I do just want to note that that is one of the things that people will do is they do have some variations in how much is covered. And that can also be for practical reasons, not just for play. It can be because it makes communication easier or because it avoids a trigger. Like somebody might be very uncomfortable with like a material like bondage tape rubbing against their sensitive feet for like two hours or they might not want to have something around their neck totally up to your individual preference. There are also other devices like sleep sacks or vacuum beds, also called vac beds, typically made from latex, which can produce a similar feeling of total restraint. However, whether or not these count as being like a subcategory of mummification or its own thing is very much up for debate. And they do have some obvious differences like they are not DIY. They are pre-made. They are typically very expensive, but they are reusable and they are typically made to measure. It can be very difficult, for example, to get another, enough leather to completely encase someone's body. And so a sleep sack might be an easier way to do that. And a vacuum bed can be something that's fun to set up at a party. It can be used for a group experience or, you know, almost sort of like a 
kinky fetishistic merry-go-round at a dungeon for example so there are some differences and i will say that for myself i think the headspace that is produced by somebody like slowly wrapping you up inch by inch around your whole body is very different than getting into a back bed or getting into a sleep sack and having somebody just like zip you up or like force the air out of the back bed similar Definitely, but like not fully the same either. And you might prefer one over the other. So with that being said, I will move on to headspaces because we did just kind of talk about that. And I think that a lot of people just sort of look at this form of play and go, okay, like what's the deal, right? Like if you're somebody who is more into power exchange, you might understand bondage because, oh, well, it just makes sense to use a collar or cuffs because it reinforces the power dynamic or it just is practical for a scene to be able to move someone's body around. If you are more of a masochist, typically people that are heavy masochists, that's their primary form of play, will more treat bondage as an accessory to heighten the sensation of what's going on, not necessarily something that's totally enjoyable just by itself. And if you're totally new to this, uh, first of all, thank you, very brave, glad you're here. You might wanna watch some other videos first before finishing this one, but if you are totally unaware of this and this is your first introduction to it, you might think, oh, this is a little like, this is kind of a little bizarre. This is a little extreme. This might even seem kind of scary, but does it necessarily have to be any of those things? Why are people into getting completely covered up from head to toe? And like in a lot of other forms of BDSM, one of the number one reasons why people enjoy this is because of relaxation. It can be very comforting to be completely bound up and just be all snuggled in like a bug in a rug. <laughs> More or less of people, do people even still even say that? I don't know, I'm sticking with it. Uh, but it's very similar to things like deep pressure therapy or using a weighted blanket, at least in my experience. And in Mistress Couple's book, The Ultimate Guide to Bondage, she spends a lot of time talking about how people can enjoy being swaddled and cocooned as it provides a sense of relief from everyday life and sort of a form of controlled escapism. Knowing you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, you are simply forced to be there in the moment, enjoying whatever it is that's happening to you. And along those same lines, it can also provoke a sense of helplessness because though you might be completely controlled, for some people that can be very enjoyable and like kind of more getting into that submissive headspace. And for others, it's more about the fear, the slow horror of being bound up and controlled and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So it can be a form of fear play in that way, a form of mind fuckery maybe even taking it into a more extreme role play space like alien abduction or some kind of medical experiment that you are going to be completely enveloped by this monstrous creature while scientists watch on or you get poked and prodded by an alien in a spaceship might seem out there but people are totally into that and speaking of medical play a lot of people do enjoy this from maybe not as much of a heavy role play side of it but just from like a practical medical play perspective where it's like yeah it's like i'm getting a full body cast or i'm part of some kind of medical experiment or it's more about like the nurses doing something to you that you don't have any control over or somebody doing something for your own good that you don't really have a say in and of course as always there are folks that are into it just for the simple sex part of it right it can feel very sexually arousing for some people though not all to be completely bound up and having something very tight just covering you all over and it can also be about the practical purposes of just like leaving a mouth or leaving genitals exposed, leaving all of those orifices open for your partner to do whatever it is they want you to do. And so because of that, it can go into a little bit of a consensual non-consent or CNC territory, though it doesn't have to necessarily be that way. And so hopefully hearing those motivations makes mummification make a little bit more sense, but it's not really the most common kink and you're not likely to see it at an everyday dungeon party. I've seen it myself personally, like 
I want to say twice at a BDSM party and like once at a convention and it was always in this very like grand sort of production way where it was clearly like a special experience not necessarily something that the person did every day every single time that they played because it can be quite involved but that being said one of the first people I ever met in the first scene I was a part of was somebody who realized pretty early on in their kink journey that they had a fetish for this kind of play. They really, really, really were into bondage. So if you're kind of wondering, okay, I wanna do this, but how do I find someone who is into this? Don't worry, there are other people that will want to try this and might be into it to the exclusion of all other kinks out there. And so let's say you find someone that you can do this kind of play with. How do you actually get started? Well, my advice is the same as with any other new kink. It's go slow and just have very low expectations. Don't try to like make a whole, you know, grand two hour long scene out of it. You're gonna have time for that later. It's really about having those initial experiences, gauging how you really feel about it, how your partner reacts and what you wanna do differently to build up to a bigger and better scene. I would start out maybe doing like 10, 15 minutes, just maybe going from like the feet up to the waist because people do more generally tend to have a stronger reaction to their head being covered compared to their feet. So I wouldn't start like with a full head wrapping or something unless you know you like things like hoods, other forms of head bondage that maybe you've tried out before. But that is where I would start and just go really slow, really simple. I think things like the two examples I have here of bondage tape and vet wrap are great because you don't need any knots. They're not anything special. This is like literally $2 per wrap, very cheap, very, very easy to find. And that can give you a really good way of trying this out. And both of them are very easy to undo. They're not complicated. And I really think that's the best place to start, right? Like don't make it too complicated for yourself. But keep in mind, no matter what material you're using, people can have an unexpectedly strong reaction to this, even just going up to their waist or even just on their legs, right? So that is why it's important to go slow because you need to be able to check in and go, okay, do we feel good? Do we feel good? Because you never know, even if you thought about it for a long time, even if you've been planning it for weeks, when you're actually there and in the moment, your body, your mind might have a completely unexpected, very strong reaction that neither party was anticipating. But if things do start to feel good, that's when you can maybe start to move up. If you've negotiated for doing that during the first scene, you can move up and go more onto the chest and around the arms. I wouldn't say during your first scene you should really do the whole head or anything like that because covering the head, as we'll talk about in a minute, can very much and will very much impede communication. I really think that when you're doing a first scene, it's always good to leave all of those options open. Now, if you are doing this at a public dungeon, I find the best furniture that you can use for this would be something like a massage table because then you can be completely laid out flat on the table. You're not gonna worry about other people entering your scene space. It's just, it's a lot easier to navigate. It's very simple. And that is where I would start with. Now, if you are at home and you don't have a massage table because most people don't, the best option I think is actually the couch. And it might seem kind of cheesy or boring, but I really think it's a great relaxing bonding scene, especially if you have a power exchange relationship to just like, sit with each other in front of the couch and maybe your dominant your top partner is on the couch and you're kind of sitting below them and they're behind you kind of wrapping you up in the bondage whatever it is you're using as that tool and then just see how that feels and maybe you get totally encased up to your neck and it's a very interesting very like I don't know how to describe it exactly it's a very my brain keeps wanting to say like empowering, but that's not really, it's a very powerful maybe experience to just sit there with your partner on the couch and not be able to do anything besides just sit there and enjoy what's happening. Maybe while they stroke your hair or they call you a good girl or a good boy, and this is I think where that relaxation element of this comes into play because a lot of us, whether it be because we work from home or we're on social media all the time, like we always feel this pressure to be engaged at every moment, right? Okay, well, like I'm watching a movie, but I could also be texting my friend or I could be getting another level on Candy Crush or whatever, right? We could be checking Facebook or Twitter for the 10 millionth time that day. 
And when you are completely bound up, you have sort of an excuse for your brain to go, okay, well, like I could be doing that, but I literally can't. So maybe just let me watch the Penguin documentary and enjoy that for the evening, you know? And you know, if you want to do something a little bit more intense, maybe have it be a horror movie instead of a Penguin documentary. But that is really where I would start out. And then you can just keep building from there. Do longer scenes, try layering on material. A lot of people like, for example, starting with something like like maybe bondage tape or cling film and then doing medical tape on top of that that is again a little bit more advanced and you don't have to worry about like people's body temperature in there especially as the material gets more layered but that is something that a lot of people do enjoy doing and then once you've had a couple of first successful scene experiences that's where we can get into layering on other forms of kink into this and where this kind of play can really help enhance the other types of bdsm that you're doing are you into tickle torture great leave the feet free and that is a very very intense tickle torture experience if you have a brat i literally cannot think of a worst punishment for them besides literally binding them up from head to toe and they cannot move well except for maybe leaving them in a corner but if you want an alternative to that and if you are someone that is a little or a pet player if you're a pony a puppy whatever i really like vet wrap i say as a huge truck goes down my street hello truck hopefully you guys can't hear that but i really like vet wrap because it comes in so many colors and it's literally it's got a pony on it like how is that not going to enhance your headspace and you can do other things with vet wrap besides full-on mummification like you maybe just do something around the torso and the arms or maybe you just do it around the legs and you do kind of like futomomo type leg ties where the thigh and the calf are bound together and you do that using vet wrap as a way to do your pet play and that can be something that i think a lot of people overlook doing but is a great alternative to maybe more expensive purpose-made gear that a lot of people tend to want to buy and even service subs can get something out of this right like imagine that you've spent the whole day slaving away in the kitchen making a couple of luxurious snacks for an evening dinner party and then imagine you get done with the snack making and all the guests come over and then you get covered in saran wrap and are used as the platter to serve those very snacks off of. Yeah, I think that personally sounds like a really, really fun time. But to me, I really think the true peanut butter and jelly pairing for this kind of play is sensory deprivation because it just it adds on to kind of that base experience of why people enjoy mummification you like feeling restrained you like feeling like you don't have any control you like feeling like you are completely encased okay well imagine doing that but then you have earplugs in or a blindfold or a ball gag or maybe you have mitts on top of your bindings. Like there are so many ways to add on to this. However, again, that is going to be more advanced because all of that can impede communication. And you really don't wanna do that when you are first starting out because of how intense mentally this can sometimes suddenly become. And also this pairs wonderfully with sensation play or wet and messy play because it just makes cleanup a lot easier when you have pre-wrapped up someone in cling film before you dump cold milk, ice cubes, syrup, motor oil, or paint all over their body. You maybe aren't going to get the same tactile experience. Maybe that difference is good. Maybe you leave part of their body just exposed with plain skin and then maybe part of it is covered with that cling film. And that can be another layer of difference, especially temperature temperature wise, sensation wise with that play. Now going back, I do want to talk about impeding communication because that is a really, really big concern. As I've said, because typically with mummification play where you're doing it to like the fullest extent, you are covering everything, the whole head, maybe except for the nostrils for breathing purposes. And if you can't speak, you're not going to be able to use a safe word. And also if your hands are bound to your side, as is the traditional way that people do this, then also you can't use a safe signal with your hands, which is the big alternative that a lot of people use. If your eyes aren't free, then you can't blink for help. You know, it just makes everything very, very complicated. And so if you do want to do this to that extent, I would really consider 
how much risk you are taking on with how bound up the person is. You might only be able to go off of mumbles and you might not be able to tell what a mumble of pleasure is versus a mumble of agony, please get me out. So just be very aware of that. This is why I advocate for leaving like maybe at least one part of the body free, right? Like maybe you bind someone up to their wrists against their bodies. So they can still like, you know, flash hands or snap or drop an object. Those are really good alternatives. Maybe you leave the mouth free or have like a zipper on it or something if you're maybe gonna layer it with a hood. So that way you have a way to actually still use a verbal safe word. Or maybe you leave the eyes free so you can have like rapid blinking or you know maybe looking in one direction or something be the signal that you need to check in. But no matter what you're doing, because of how bound up the person is, this is a very, very vulnerable position. This is not like a first date night activity. Please do not meet someone on Hinge or Bumble or OkCupid or whatever the kids are using these days for a dating app. Please do not go on there, meet someone, and then go to their house and do this form of play because as the bottom, you are in a very, very vulnerable position where it is hard to get help, it is hard to free yourself, it is hard to communicate, so just be very, very cautious. And as the top, you need to be very respectful of that. You need to understand how much the bottom is putting into your hands when you are doing this kind of scene. And if you are not ready for that level of responsibility, don't do this kind of play. This is also why I encourage you, if it's possible, to do this kind of play in person, at a dungeon, like, and by in person, I mean like around other people, I guess, like at a dungeon in public, doing something where other people are going to be able to see you and interfere if something seems to be going wrong. And besides just partner safety, there's also the safety of the bondage itself to consider. So for example, as I've already talked about a couple of times, it's a really good idea to leave the nose free. With some materials, they might be more breathable, and I'm not necessarily familiar with what those might be, but if they are more breathable, you might not need to do this, but I would very much highly encourage you to either leave the nose free completely, or at least like, you know, poke holes for the nostrils. Make sure the partner that is in the bondage can breathe fully before you get totally into the scene space, and always be checking in to make sure they are breathing. Now, with this, as with any kind of bondage, Positional asphyxia is very much at risk here. So do not put a fully bound person on their stomach when you are mummifying them. That is a recipe for not great things happening. A supine or side lying position is probably gonna be the most common. If you are more advanced and feel more comfortable, you can do alternatives to this, or maybe you are sort of kneeling or you're on hands and knees, that kind of thing as well. But just for the basics, I would stick to either completely on your back with your head up or being in some kind of side lying position that is going to be easier long-term to be able to sustain in a scene like this. I would always recommend having some kind of safety shears or something that can be used to cut the material you're using, be that latex, bandage wrap, a sheet, whatever you need, make sure you have a way to cut it off. Because even if something with the bondage itself doesn't necessarily go wrong, mentally, someone might suddenly be very uncomfortable and a bottom might hurt themselves in a panic trying to free themselves from the bondage, even if up to that point, everything was going really well. So just be cautious, always have a way to cut things off. And that is again, why I like materials like vet wrap and just bondage tape, because they are much easier to remove even in a panic scenario because no knots, no locks, no metal, nothing too fancy, and you're not gonna break the bank if it does have to be cut off. So yeah, never underestimate the likelihood of panic and claustrophobia with this kind of play. Now, you may find some people that want to experience a feeling of abandonment with this kind of play. They want almost that kind of like negative, fearful experience that maybe other people are very much trying to avoid. and. As is always the case, I do not recommend leaving someone alone in bondage, especially this level of bondage. There are ways you can simulate the fear of being abandoned without actually having done that. With the creative use of a blindfold, background music, a little bit of role play and build up beforehand, you can make someone believe they have probably been left behind alone without actually having left them alone. And that is much, much safer. 
Mindfuckery is great. Don't be afraid to take advantage of it. Now, as a final note here, because I did just spend a lot of time talking about safety stuff, I do think that mummification is like weirdly one of the safer forms of like total bondage over someone's body. If you are someone that is like, I really want to get into rope bondage, but I don't have the patience for like knots and patterns. I want to do suspension. I want that feeling of like totally being bound and in the air and completely out of control. If that's what you want, I might start here first because again, no knots, easy to cut through, not expensive. It's not even really something that takes a lot of skill other than just like practicing how to actually do it a couple of times. Whereas learning rope bondage, that can take years to become fully proficient in. So if you want to have that experience of like totally being bound up, maybe don't wait for the next rope bondage 101 class to pop up like once a year maybe you can start with this. And if you do want some demo information, if you want to see how other people do this, I actually just did a video over on my Patreon of a self-play demo of how to do this from like the feet up to about the midpoint of the waist. So if you want a good starting point, a good demonstration of how to do this, I also talk about like material selection, other things in that video as well. I will put a link to it down below. It is available to all of my patrons at the $10 and above level. I also have tons of other demos on my Patreon, things like cigar, play and other forms of bondage as well. There's a lot of bondage actually on there. I realized pet play, all sorts of different types of, you know, videos as well, not just demos, but like private conversations, things I don't necessarily talk about here on YouTube. And with all that being said, I think that's all I have time for for today on mummification. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. For me personally, I really do again. I think this is very much an overlooked form of play. And if you've listened to this, if you've gotten all the way through, I really recommend giving it a try the next time you're planning out a scene. And so yeah, with that being said, that's everything for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you're not already, please go ahead and subscribe. I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related subjects. And finally, as I already mentioned, you can go over to my Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already come over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.